Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to continue our discussion on bandwidth restrictions. Now last week we talked about how to restrict bandwidth with subzones. So this week we're going to talk about how to do that with something called pipes. Now the approach with pipes is a little different and the reason for this is because pipes are applied to links. Remember links are what make communication between the different zones possible. So going back to our default setup here, we'll have a default subzone, a default zone, and a traversal subzone with the default links between them. So what I can do is I can configure a pipe and then apply it to one of these links. Okay, so let's create a pipe and we'll call this pipe one. And pipes, uh, just like with a subzone, control bandwidth on a total or per call basis. Now what's different about pipes is that with the per call, you won't see the within or the in out options like we did with subzones. And this is because, of course, endpoints can't register to a pipe. Now the way you should think about pipes is that they're really like valves, something that can control the flow of bandwidth passing through the link. In any case, the interesting thing about pipes is that you can take a single pipe and apply it to a single link, or you can take a single pipe and apply it to multiple links. So I can take pipe one and apply it to the link between the default subzone and the default zone, and I can apply the same link between the default subzone and the traversal subzone. In this case, we would say that we have only one pipe here one pipe that has been applied to two different links, okay? So let's say pipe one had a total bandwidth of 384K. And for now, the per call bandwidth, it, it doesn't matter, okay? So that's what we've allocated for this pipe. Now let's say we have a SIP endpoint registered to the default subzone here, and it's gonna call another SIP endpoint out here, let's say uh, in the default zone somewhere out there, it doesn't matter. And so we have a 384K call going on between them, okay? Now let's say while that call is going on, we have a completely different endpoint, say an H323 endpoint over here. It's trying to call another SIP endpoint out here, the default zone as well. Now, because this is a traversal call, it's gonna take a completely different path. It's gonna go from the default subzone to the traversal zone, then to the default zone. Now we might be tempted to think that in this scenario, the call will go through because it's taking a completely different path, but since Pipe one has been applied to the link between the default subzone and the traversal subzone. The call is gonna get rejected because the bandwidth allocated for that pipe is already being used up in the initial SIP to SIP call, okay? So pipes can be applied to single links or multiple links uh, as we just saw, but you can also apply two pipes to a single link. So to explain this, let's uh, set up a different scenario here. Let's say we've got a single expressway server, but it's set up to cover multiple physical locations and uh, they're all communicating across a WAN network. Okay, so we're gonna say that the default subzone is HQ and then we have uh, site one and site two, uh, which could be anywhere. It could be uh, another city or even another country. It doesn't really matter, just another physical location. Okay, now keep in mind that I'm purposely leaving out the traversal subzone and the default zone just to keep this simple here. Uh, of course, in a real scenario, you'd have to take that into account as well, but I just want to keep things simple here for today. So when we go across this WAN, depending on what kind of WAN connection you have, uh, they may have different bandwidth capabilities from each of these locations you know, out to the public internet uh, to go across the WAN. So from headquarters out, they might have, say, a four meg connection. And site one, they might have only a two meg connection. And uh, then let's say uh, site two has only a one meg connection. And uh, I, I know this isn't very realistic. Uh, I know that I'm just keeping the numbers kind of low so that you can kind of see how this is gonna work. So in any case, uh, these are the physical connections that they have across the WAN. So what we're gonna do in our expressway is we're gonna go in and build these different subzones to represent each location. So we'll say subzone one for site one and subzone two for site two. And then remember from a previous video that when we create additional subzones, we're gonna get links between each of these subzones to the default subzone automatically. Now, we're not gonna get an automatic link between subzone one and two, uh, but we can go easily go in and, and add that manually. 
Okay, so what you see in red here, this is my virtual topology on top of my physical network, the physical connection represented in black. Okay, now because I have different bandwidth requirements in each location, I want to put specific bandwidth restrictions on each location respectively. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a pipe, and we'll call this HQ because the HQ pipe is going to represent the headquarters office. Now remember we have a total and per call bandwidth, so the per call bandwidth uh, for that one, everybody's going to get 384k per call across the board. But my total bandwidth, uh, what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to take this 4 megabits that I have available on my physical connection. And, and remember, this 4 megabits is for everything I have going across the network. So I don't want to give the full amount for video calls because I'd use that up really quickly. Uh, and then people couldn't send emails or whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take half of that bandwidth and I'm going to say 2 meg total bandwidth for the HQ pipe. And then what I'm going to do is apply the HQ pipe to every link that comes out of the headquarters office. Now in this case, it's just subzone 1 and subzone 2, but, but remember if I had the traversal subzone and the default zone, I'd want to apply those as well. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing for subzone 1 or site 1. I'm going to create another pipe. We'll call it sub 1. And for per call, I'm going to say 384 again because uh, everybody gets 384 no matter what. But my total bandwidth for the sub 1 pipe, because I have two, a 2 meg capability, I'll take half of that bandwidth. 1 meg and apply to the total bandwidth of the sub 1 pipe. And then just as before, I'll apply that pipe to every link that comes out of that subzone as well. Now, as you can see, I have two pipes on a single link. So then uh, we'll do the same thing for subzone 2. We'll create a third pipe and call it sub 2. And we'll once again set the per call bandwidth to 384. And then for the total bandwidth, uh, they have 1 meg on the physical connection, so we'll just make that 512k. And then, of course, we'll apply the sub 2 pipe to the links between subzone 1 and subzone 2, and of course, to the link between subzone 2 and the default subzone. Okay, so let's see how this works. Let's say we've got an endpoint at headquarters and one on subzone 2. Now, remember, a call is going to follow the shortest path. And if that shortest path is blocked, then the call is going to fail. Okay, so that means, at least in this scenario, the calls are going to go directly from the default subzone to subzone 2. So if I place a call at 384k, that call is going to go through the HQ pipe. So I have to take 384 out of that 2 meg. Then it's going to go through the sub 2 pipe. Uh, so then I'm going to take 384 out of the 512 allocated for the sub 2 pipe, which means that the sub 2 pipe has only 128k left. But that's enough, and that call is going to go through and connect in subzone 2. So now let's say at the same time this first call is taking place. So these calls are happening simultaneously. Let's say we have another endpoint back at headquarters, and this one's going to call an endpoint in subzone 1. Okay, So once again, it's going to follow the shortest path. So when it makes a call, it's going to go through the HQ pipe. And so we're going to need to take another 384 out of that 2 meg allocated for the HQ pipe. And then it's going to go through the sub 1 pipe. So you'll need to take 384 from the 1 meg allocated for that. Okay, And then uh, that call is going to go through and connect to subzone 1. But what's going to happen now if we have another endpoint uh, at the same time that these other two calls are taking place? What's going to happen if another endpoint at site 1 makes a call to an endpoint in site 2? So once again, the call is going to take the shortest path, and so it's going to hit the sub 1 pipe here first. And so we can take 384 out of that, and there's still plenty of bandwidth left over uh, in the sub 1 pipe. So no problems there. But then when we get to the sub 2 pipe, we won't be able to do a 384 call because remember the sub 2 pipe uh, with that one, there's only 128k left over. So that call will still connect, but uh, it will only connect at 128k. Okay, And there won't be any bandwidth left over for any additional calls. Okay, so And by the way, uh, since it's forced into a 128 call, it's going to take out 128 from the sub 1 pipe. It's no longer going to be 384, so we can revise that total. Okay, so if there were another call to subzone 2, then that call is going to fail, at least until someone else hangs up and uh, opens up more bandwidth.
Okay, so let's go over the expressway so I can show you how we would set this up. Now, I've already created subzone 1 and subzone 2 in advance because remember, these are additional subzones. They're not part of the out of the box default configuration. So I've already configured them and set up the links between them so that we don't get sidetracked with all that. Uh, we're just here to understand how to create and configure our pipes. Okay, so to create a pipe, we want to first go up to configuration and then bandwidth and then pipes. And then we'll click new. And we'll call this one HQ underscore pipe. And here we can see our total bandwidth and per call bandwidth. So we'll select limited here. And remember for HQ, we allocated two megs, so 2048. And the per call bandwidth was 384K and then we'll click Create Pipe. Okay, we'll click New to create another one, and this one uh, we'll call Sub1 underscore Pipe. And remember for this pipe we said uh, 1024 for total bandwidth, and then 384 for per call. Okay, we'll go ahead and create that pipe. Okay, let's go ahead and click New to make one more, and this one we said was a sub two underscore pipe. And uh, remember sub two only gets uh, 512 for the total bandwidth. And again, 384 for the per call. We'll go ahead and click create pipe. Perfect. Now from here, we've configured all of our pipes, but as it is, they're, they're not gonna do anything. Everything is still gonna be the same because we haven't applied the pipes to any links. So to do that, you can click this little link here, view, edit, add, and delete links, or you can go to configuration, bandwidth, and then links. Either way, both take you to the same place. Now, one thing to note before you get started here uh, is that you have these hyperlinks listed under node one or node two. And if you click them, it's just gonna take you to those subzones uh, that are listed, which is not what we want. So to apply pipes to links, you want to either click the link under the name column over here on the far left, or you can uh, click view edit over here on the far right, okay? Now the names here are, are kind of squished together, so you, you gotta look closely. So notice this one here, it says uh, subzone 001 to default subzone, or, or SZ, and then subzone 002 to default subzone. So these are the links between the default subzone and subzones one and two uh, that we created for the scenario. And so this is uh, where we're gonna apply our pipes. So I'm gonna click on subzone one first and notice that I can put up to two pipes on this link. So remember between the default subzone and subzone one, we need the HQ pipe and we also need subzone one pipe. And and the order here doesn't matter. Uh, we could do sub one first and it wouldn't make any difference. Okay, so let's go ahead and click save. Next, let's click on subzone 002 to default subzone. And between subzone two and the default subzone, we wanna add the HQ pipe and then subzone two pipe. Okay, we'll go ahead and click save and we're almost set except that we have one more link that we need to address. Now, remember, when you create a subzone, the expressway will automatically create a link back to the default subzone. And that's what these two links are here, the ones that we just configured. However, for the link between the subzone one and subzone two, I had to go in and create this link manually. Uh, and when I did, I gave it this name, uh, subzone one to subzone two. So we'll go ahead and uh, go in and configure this one the same way. So for this link, we'll need to apply the subzone one pipe and then the sub two pipe. And we'll click save and then we should be all set. Now remember for this demonstration, we did not take into account the traversal subzone or the default zone. So remember in a real situation, of course you'd wanna configure and apply your pipes to those as well. Okay, that's bandwidth restriction with pipes. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, I'll see you guys in the next one.